All righty. Well, I uh, appreciate if you, uh, well, first off, if you, if there are any others that need permission to record, please uh, do type in the chat that you need permission. And uh, my partner, uh, Amanda Ellis will, uh, will get to you and get, get you that permission. Um, in the meantime, I uh, appreciate everyone joining on, uh, on short notice here. Uh, as you have uh, no doubt seen already, and while you're here, uh, issued uh, several penalties about 15 minutes ago. Uh, wanted to have our senior vice president uh, of competition, Elton Sawyer, um, join us to provide some context to those penalties, answer any questions uh, that you may have. Um, as, uh, as I usually start, uh, there is uh, potential for an appeal here. So if we don't get into uh, as many of the weeds as you would like, that is why. Um, but we do want to try to give as much context as, as we can at this time. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to questions to the media. Um, and uh, we will start with uh, Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Hey, Elton, um, can you explain the process? You guys took these parts from the Hendrick cars and the, and the 31 car back to the R&D Center for further evaluation. Can you kind of discuss or explain what the, that, that process is like and what led to, you know, giving you guys the, the, the sense of you needed to make this penalty call? Yeah, uh, Dustin, basically, as we um, we mentioned that Phoenix, you know, this is an uncharted waters. We, uh, from time to time, we'll capture parts, we'll bring it back. And as we continue to investigate and look at parts and comparing parts, um, it was obvious to us that these parts had been modified in an area that wasn't approved. Um, this is a consistent penalty with what uh, we went through last year with, uh, you know, with other competitors, the six, the 34. Um, so we felt like, um, you know, to keep the, um, you know, the garage on a level playing field, the competition level where it needs to be, um, all the dialogue that went around this car last year, working with the owners on what the deterrent model should be, uh, we were we were put in a position that we didn't feel like there was no other way but to write a penalty. And just to clarify, I, I think there have been some questions or, or comments about regards to that teams could kind of do some slight modifications to these parts to help make them fit. Is that correct? And this, in your eyes, I guess, kind of went beyond that, that teams could do some stuff, but this, in your eyes, was beyond that? Yes, absolutely. Oh. There, There is components, as we have approved, working directly with, uh, uh, with the industry and the garage and a process to do that. Um, this area was not approved. Uh, we felt like the communication uh, line between NASCAR and the garage was done properly. And um, obviously they were outside the boundaries. Thank you. Sure. Next, we'll go to Jim Mutter. Go ahead, Jim. Hi, Elton. Uh, one question on the vents and one on Denny Hamlin. Okay. Uh, just on the vents, last year you, um, you guys obviously had a few instances where you addressed teams that had uh, – modifications to single source uh, supplier parts and issued some pretty stern penalties. Are you a little surprised? Is NASCAR a little a little surprised that the issue is still appearing one year later? Um, I don't know if the word is surprised, Jim. Um, maybe I'll use disappointed. Um, I think um, we've made it very clear um, through the very start of this project with the next gen car, again, as I alluded to earlier, working directly with the, with the garage, the owners and what the deterrent model needs to be. Uh, and it's NASCAR's responsibility to make sure that we uphold that. So, um, we will continue to do what we need to do to keep this, this car in check. Um, it's for the betterment of our sport. It's the be betterment, uh, for the business model. And that's our responsibility. We will continue to do that. And on the Denny Hamlin situation, uh, you guys made an adjustment to the rule book at the end of last season that touched on uh, intentional wrecking of another competitor. But you have also penalized people that for that in the past. I was wondering, was this situation in direct result of the change in the rule book? Or do you know, would it have been addressed anyway, regardless of 
how the circumstances played out after Sunday? I think we the way we look at these these situations, Jim, is they're all individual, right? They're they're unique to themselves. And when you look at this one this past weekend, um, we would have viewed that as a as a recent incident. Um, but then as 24 hours later, you know, have a competitor that has gone on a, on a podcast, which I will say we, we're delighted that Denny has a, a podcast. We think that's great, interacts with the fans. But when you start admitting that you have intentionally done something that would compromise the results of the end of the race, then that rises to a level that we're going to get involved. Uh, there's there's no um, there's no other way to look at that. We're going to get involved in those situations. We've been consistent in the past with that, and we will be consistent going forward. Thank you very much, Elson. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll go to Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Hey, Alton. Appreciate the time. Um, when it came to looking at the Hendrick cars on Friday, was that a was that a thing that you guys were tipped off on, or was that something you guys just randomly decided to do, just to kind of make sure that the garage was kind of on the up and up? Yeah, I think it's it's more of a it's a random, um, if you will, uh, Jordan. Again, I, I keep going back to this, and this this isn't uncharted waters for NASCAR. It's been done for years. Uh, we will continue to do that. Um, and as we're working through this car, we just, again, we want to make sure, um, you know, the car is in the box that it needs to be in and we're officiating, officiating and, and inspecting at the level that we need to. So, um, yeah. And then the other question I had was about Denny's penalty. Um, there's kind of this, this code among drivers and NASCAR's talked about too, of letting drivers kind of police themselves a little bit when they've had, you know, run-ins with each other. Um, one could say that this was a driver policing himself in this instance. What is the difference uh, why this warranted a penalty and sometimes other incidents where drivers policing himself uh, hasn't warranted a penalty? I, totally different from this aspect, uh, Jordan. The fact that, um, and, and we encourage that. We want them to show their personalities. We want them to settle this. We don't want to be in the middle of it. But this one has gone on for a little while. It went on last year. Um Felt like maybe we were in a good spot. Looks like it was rare in its head again. Um, and then the comments that were made afterwards put us in no um, put us in a position that we had no choice but to to react. And again, that has been consistent. Um, if you look at prior um, cases, even last year, of, of how we reacted to this. Very good. Thank you very much. Yep. Next, we we'll go to Bob Parker. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Elton, can you give us any idea of what area of the louvers were modified? Um, the the area they weren't supposed to work in, Bob, is the best I can I can tell you there. Um, there's areas again um, that has been approved, um, uh, and we've worked with the teams um, on the, on the parts to be able to get them on on their fitment and things of that nature. Uh, again, this one rose to a level that was way beyond that. And I mean, obviously, a single source supply part is not supposed to be modified, but is it safe to say that any modifications to a louver could impact downforce? Uh, we don't normally get into the intent, um, but I think it's fair to say that there was some, there was performance, um, could be performance around these modifications, but you know, let's let's also give credit where credit's due. They they went out and still had a outstanding. A race on Sunday and performed at a high level without those modifications. Thank you. Thanks. We'll go to Claire B. Link. Uh, Claire. Thank you. Quick question on Denny. If Denny would have said it on the radio that he was going to get him, but it was during the course of the race versus later on a podcast, would that have been different if he said, I'm going to get you? And he went and got him. Or you know, later on the podcast, he kind of rubs it in your face a little bit in a way, even though you love him doing a podcast. Can, can you, because actions detrimental kind of fits into that. Maybe, I don't know. Tell us. Yeah. I, Claire, I, I would, I would phrase it this way. Um, and I don't like to normally comment on hypotheticals, but what I would say, if you just look at this individual um, case and how it unfolded, and then you look at what happened on on Monday in the podcast and the comments that were made, it did put us in, in a position that we had to react. Yes. And so 
no, no difference made by the fact that they made up that Denny said on his podcast, now we're even, now we talked about it and we're going to race each other better. That doesn't go into your conversation on this. Yeah, the, the comments, um, I think if you look at it from a 30,000 foot view and you look at our athletes at the highest level of motorsports in North America and sending the message that it's okay to tell somebody um, that I'm going to wreck you um, and then do that, um, that's not the message that, that we need to be sending to, you know, to anybody. For sure, we don't need to be sending that to young drivers that are starting out in lower levels and, and inspire to be at the NASCAR Cup level, you know, in some you know, period of time. That's not the message that, um, you know, we need to be sending. And one other really quick question on the uh, penalties related to the events on the hoods. People in the garage will say, well, we're having trouble getting these parts or we've had, you know, they're not there. What's the message to the garage and how are the parts? What is the crazy part about it or is it not, you know? Yeah, Thank I think you. that, yeah, the answer to that, Clara, would be there is a process. We've worked very close with the OEMs to come up with a, a solution that would ultimately be passed on to the race teams. The industry has been well aware of that communication. We felt like there's no miscommunication on our side. We have delivered that message uh, and how that process works. And as long as everyone stays within the process, then we would be fine. But that wasn't the case here. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yep. Okay, if we have time for one more, and we'll take it from Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Elton. Can you distinguish or describe to us the difference between the penalties that went to Hendrick and the penalties I missed that went to the 31 car? Uh, they're, they're the same penalty. Okay, because it was just the numbers were different and what said that the penalties were. That's why I was kind of curious. Um, you were breaking up there. If you could ask that one more time. Um, yeah, let me let me pull that up real quick. On the penalty sheet, there were it was two separate penalties, and that's that's why I guess I was confused on it. It said it, um, guiding principles relative to penalties, and then time, manner, location, overall assemble vehicle rules on the radiator duct, and that's why I was you know kind of looking at what the difference was. Yep, the difference is one was in the opening inspection and one was in the pre-qualifying inspection. That's why it's written that way. Okay, super. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, well, we appreciate everyone's time. Thank you, Elton, for your time. Uh, yeah, if there's absolutely. any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to anyone in NASCAR Communications. And if you're going to Atlanta, safe travels. Have a great day, everybody. Yep. Thanks, everyone.